Have you ever felt fear so strongly that it stopped you in your tracks? <laughs> Petrified and nervous. I'm like hyperventilating. I jump on one. But then all of a sudden you breathe, let go. Oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I think I can handle this. And just go for it. What? We experience fear a few times in this episode. And on the contrary, exhilaration. It's our first time sailing overseas, so come join us for our very first med mooring. How are you all feeling about this? And the moment a charter boat what are they? Good idea to do that. gets way too close for comfort as we explore the Greek islands. On our last episode, we introduced you to our crew, Chris, Rachel, John, and myself. We're on a Beneteau Sense 51, thanks to Navigare Yachting. We picked her up from Athens, sailed her to Kythnos, and today, at the crack of dawn, we're taking you to the magical island of Milos, which is about 20 nautical miles away. He moves like a magnet, wearing holes in the carpet. We've just left, and admittedly, Rachel and I are still sleeping, and we missed out on this incredible sunrise. Thank goodness for the boys for capturing this moment. But on the upside, as soon as our scales got up, the boys had taken one for the team, motoring us to Milos because there was no wind. Wow. Amazing. We're definitely in prime. Nine meters of water. Our first spot is Sarakiniko, also dubbed White Rock Beach, situated on the north shore of Milos. I could wait a million years or more. The landscape here on Milos is absolutely literally out of this world. It feels like you're walking on the moon. You can check out some of these rock formations. Uh, it's almost like acid rain has created these beautiful formations that explode out onto the cliffs. It's pretty spectacular. And when you stand next to the cliffs and you look out, it actually takes your breath away. I'm not sure how high this is. I'm thinking like 15 meters. It's pretty high. First, there was a test run before the real deal. All right, let's go. One, two, three, go. Cliff jump here has been an absolute dream, not for me, but watching Chris and John do it is so, so spectacular. I wish I had the courage. I'm just a little bloody pansy. We can definitely tick this one off the bucket list. Due to COVID, we weren't able to head overseas for a couple of years. So this is the very, very first time that we've been able to, to leave Australia and experience another country again. This is something so different and unique. The cultural aspect is brilliant. And it's nice to hear the foreign languages from all over the world. There's lots of Germans here. Um, we've had a few French people. And I honestly haven't heard any Aussie accents, which is quite interesting. While tourism has exploded here recently, half the residents on Milos live off the mines, as natural rock and minerals found on the island have long been the main source of wealth. There are natural hot springs here, gases bubbling from the seabed, and colourful boathouses called simata. They were once used by fishermen and painted brightly so they could find their home when returning at night. Wow, it's so beautiful. But now, they're mostly fully restored and rented out sometimes for upwards of $600 a night during summer months. Okay, so as we were motoring along, we saw these caves, and so we thought we would get a little closer. Wow. Milos is volcanic and its narrow coves were once lairs for pirates, a place they'd set up their ambushes. So we got a little closer, John stayed at the helm as we weren't sure we could anchor here, 
plus, we were in just four and a half meters of water. Are you gonna go it? Go for front. Really? Yeah. I've never done that before. Yeah, it's gonna be sick. <laughs> I think you're supposed to put your head down. I like face planted. We're not really sure what they are for, or if pirates were here, or... Let's go find out. It's pretty magic. Very slippery. From what I've read, pirates were here in the 1500s to the 19th century. Ooh. Wow, very cool. It's been dug out by someone. The pirates were Greeks, foreigners, Christians and infidels, and often demanded ransoms. Perhaps exploring was our way of putting off the thought of having to medmore. Rather than explain how medmoring works and what has to be done to medmore, let's just show you in this next series of events. Okay, so we are about to attempt our very first medmoring. How are we all feeling about this? I'm nervous because <laughs> I don't know what to do. This is Rachel's first time on a sailboat ever. As for John, Chris and I, well, we have our own boats in Australia, but we've never sailed in the med. Therefore, we've never done a med mooring. Your name's on the hire contract. <laughs> I have to say the best thing about this charter is that there's this care package, which means that we don't pay any excess if we were to damage the boat. So that takes the pressure off. We watched a YouTube video this morning about med mooring, didn't we, Rachel? Yes. Yep, so we're all over it. Good idea, pretty good idea. Rachel and I are gonna be on the lines. Chris is gonna be on the anchor and John's gonna be at the helm, skipper. With towering ferries flying by, we've just entered into the protected centre of the island and we're approaching Adamantas port, where we're going to be reversing in, capturing the moment in all its glory. Is that recording, Rach? Right? Yep. What do you reckon? Maybe a little bit more? At the helm, John is communicating with Chris at the bow. Together, they're trying to determine when's a good time to start putting out the anchor. All right, mate. Go there. Even on calm days, we always have an exit strategy. It all goes to we'll go out. And a little bit of help never goes astray. Hey ya! Howdy. Keep going, mate. That's cool. So I'll give her mine and... Okay? <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, thank you. Got the standout from this morning. Catch it! Catch it's it! Catch. Oh! Pull the anchor. Five. With the anchor chain now tight at the bow and the line secure at the stern, Cascade was firmly in place and attracting some attention. Nice boat. Thank you. Wish it was ours. We're chartering Cascade with Navigare Yachting. So if you'd like to do a similar trip this summer, you can check her availability and pricing. I'll leave a link in the description and you can use promo code Takana to get $200 off your booking. And if you don't have skipper experience, just let Navigare know and they'll organize a skipper for you. So all you need to worry about is who you'll invite, but just make sure they love a sleep in. You got up pretty early this morning. So yeah, did you? We, we both got up at the same time to take a leak off the back deck. So we had a little toolbox meeting while we were there and decided we will pull the anchor up with the boats about 20 meters away from us. We made a heap of noise and just snuck out. <laughs> <laughs> It's supposed to be on holidays. It's 3.43 in the morning. Hey, Rach, how was the sunrise? We missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Christina and I got up. Like, everybody got up at the same time, and we went out into, like, what do you call that? The living room? The galley? Yeah, the galley, where the couches are. And I looked out the window, and it was, like, beautiful and pink, but I didn't see the sun actually come up. And then uh, Christina and I got cozy on the couches out there and fell asleep for another few hours. It was great. And there were more alarms going off. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. Still happening. It seems it's peak hour from lunchtime. Boats started to pour in. We've literally just done our own med mooring. Haven't even had the chance to like settle in and the boys are already there helping out. Nobody wow. needs to know. So oh. to <laughs> yeah. Nobody needs to know, let go. Well done guys, paying it forward. <laughs> You believe hold on tight, screaming to the net. 
Usually whenever John and I arrive to a new destination, we scope out the surrounds, it's your clean the boat, and we put out the trash. All right, see you guys. Okay, you guys. Have fun. Okay, so we have arrived at Milos. That was really easy. You can't do that in Australia. We've literally just moored up here at the marina. We're just walking along the street in about like a minute. How have you found it so far, Rach? I love it. It's so relaxing. I think you've made me a boat person. <laughs> <laughs> have you found the motion? Like the first night was obviously pretty bad, but... Fine, I like it. It like helps me go to sleep. Like really? I, find, I feel really comfortable. Before really? it was a bit rocky when I was editing my video and I was totally fine. I was just enjoying it. Really? I feel sick. Nothing. How good's that? Our job here is done. The days here in Greece are so long in summer. The sun doesn't set until 9 p.m. So we were so excited to explore Milos by night, showering and scrubbing up first. We are all dressed up, ready to go. We just have one problem. Bye, Pauline. So this guy who's right next to us has his music pumping. If we get back home and it's pumping like that, John is going to lose his. Rather than disturbing our neighbors, Chris found this low key, beautiful bar nearby with plenty of character and a killer view. It is so photogenic. It is golden hour. Oh, wow. That looks nice, Rach. Beautiful. The marina is absolutely packed tonight. And that's where we paid. It's only eight euro for the night, and that also included power. We slept like babies on board, and the next morning we wanted to walk to Plucker. Yes, it was quite the journey navigating the narrow streets, the weaving roads, and that hot summer sun. It took us almost an hour to get there. Misty blue sky. All right, we have literally just walked out 45 minutes and we have made it to Plucker. We are so sweaty, but wow, this is amazing. Oh, you know, you know. We had this beautiful view looking over this church down so into the Aegean yeah. Sea. It was stunning. It was really, really beautiful. And it was worth the walk. I feel like we needed some exercise. Okay, well, we're back on the boat and red hot and sweaty after that. So sweaty. So this morning, we're about to retrace our steps and swing around to the northeastern tip of Milos to the third and final popular spot on this island, Polonia, where we experienced that... What are they... a good idea to do that? ...encounter. As we made our way around, the scale of the mountains revealed just how far we had walked up to Plaka. John, that's it now. That's why we're on. Starving, it was time to refill. We just left our first departure from event boring and all really went well and to plan. We just put in together a quick lunch. So what do we have? We've got some lettuce, capsicum, salami, avocado, red cabbage, lettuce, chili cheese. Chili cheese. Let's do it. Wow. And that's when we spotted these amazing cliffs. Wow, the water looks so blue. Oh my god, he's got no fear. Don't try this at home, folks. Tony. No doubt Chris's past has made him one daredevil. Sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> Being here in Europe and sailing in Greece has reinvigorated our love for the sport and the opportunity that we could have here in the Mediterranean. So watch this space. Uh, 3.8 and reversing now. We're gonna be alright. This is just how it is here, right? It's like 20 meter grids of chains. Uh, I'm about 10 meters in front of a piece of chain. Oh, uh, so if we drag, we might hook it. That's we will hook the chain. Right. Yeah, 100%. But with calm winds and the sun setting, we took the chance. Eyeing off all those tavernas in the distance, we got ready for dinner and on to the tender when this yacht arrived right next to ours. What are Isn't they? Isn't it a good idea to do that? Hey, can you go you back? Hit the boat. Despite our close proximity, they picked up their mooring. Uh, oh my god! What are you doing? At this point, the captain raced back to the helm. Like, like we're happy to move, but you got to give us a chance. Are you kidding me? And to make matters worse. <laughs> Oh my God. We ran out of fuel and we had to start paddling. <laughs> All right, do you want to get some fitness out straight away? We'll be off in a second. Quickly turning the instruments on, the engine on, we were off. A new experience, a new lesson learned. That's the thing about boating. What's your depth? Five and a half. Yeah. You just never stop learning. How's that? Okay. You were quick, girl. What the heck happened there? Oh, well, there's just this like mooring field with moorings everywhere that don't look like they yeah. ever get used. And we just parked where we thought we could. They uh, like a day charter and they came back and they wanted their mooring, even though it was like a meter away from ours. They wouldn't give us the chance to move the boat before they put the boat on it. So anyway, we got, got out of there. there. How bad? Um, still in there, but it must be just one of the boat. Yeah. Well, let's see anyway. Uh, take two. 